So we're here at Action Chapel International to talk to the man of the moment, uh, celebrating 40, 60, 40 years of ministry, 60 years of life. We're talking to Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, who is seen as the patriarch of the charismatic movement in these parts. Archbishop, happy birthday to you and congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. You've been 40 years in ministry. Yeah. So you were 19 or 20 when you started. Mm -hmm. That's not a very regular age to start ministry. Mm -hmm. We've seen that you've written a lot in your book, mm -hmm. but give us a few of the juicy highlights. Um, I had an encounter with Christ on the bed of affliction after uh, experiencing um, an attack from the enemy where I was compelled by the forces of evil to set my hand on fire. And after that incident, I was rushed to Kolibu, admitted at Ward 8 for four months where I had a lot of encounters, uh, demonic encounters, and also encountered Christ at the end and surrounded my life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And that was when it all began from the bed of affliction. And at that moment, I knew that I was called for such a time like this to impact my generation. And that, uh, I would say, uh, explained a lot of the uh, misfortunes and the complications of my life which began from my mother's womb where she got pregnant and she bled for many months, about four months, became anemic, couldn't carry the pregnancy and uh, Dr. Sacramento there was a DNC performed and after Months after the DNC, the stomach kept growing, and they then found out that apparently we were twins, and the DNC took my twin away, and I survived the DNC. And then I was born after that, and according to what I'm told, uh, any time I, I got, I was ill, it was like life and death. Everything about me was complicated. And as uh, I began to grow, with education and everything, it was very clear that something was out from my life. It was like there was a hired assassin on my case to take me out, you know, and to make sure that I would never discover the reason for my being. And with hindsight now, and by illumination, which by God's grace I walk in now, I now can appreciate why I have to go through the things I went through. So was it all the enemy by familiar spirit knowing your destiny and wanting to abort it or could part of it be God wanting to prepare his man for the assignment? I think it was both because the Bible says in Romans 8.28 that all things work together for the good of them that love God and, according, and are called according to his purpose. So I believe that it was the enemy, but God was working through it at the same time. Like Joseph said, you meant it for evil, but God turned it for good. So the enemy had an assignment, killed this young man, like in the case of Moses and that of Jesus. And even David, 24 uh, assassination attempts were made on the life of David. And uh, that of Joseph, he ended up in prison. He was, he was misrepresented and he was implicated by Potiphar's wife. And that took him to prison for many years. But God had to use all that mm. to prepare him for the assignment. What role do you think fathers played? You sp spoke a bit about your biological father, and you spoke also about Ben Sinodahosa. Generally, how important are fathers? And what role do you think father figures played in your life to make you become who you are today? Um, I think that the beginning of my life before I met my father at the age of 15, those few years, you know, uh, the, 
my father wasn't in my life, so it created a vacuum that gave the enemy a lot of advantage mm. because my mother couldn't control me, you know. And uh, looking back to my life and uh, when I met my dad and everything, I realized that I should have been with him because he, he had the ability to command mm. and you have to line up. You know, and he taught us consequences. You know, you couldn't fool with him. You know, my mom would say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And then you do say, I'll beat you, I'll beat you, I'll beat you. You know, and uh, she doesn't, she didn't keep her word, mm -hmm. you know. And mothers have a tendency of letting kids get away with a lot that mm -hmm. fathers don't. Mm -hmm. But I would say that um, fathers are very strategic mm -hmm. to what, their children become in life because if you look at the Bible throughout the Bible as much as the Bible says to honor father and mother inheritance always comes from fathers and it's fathers who name their children and children are named after their fathers so as much as mothers are very important and without a mother you can't come into the well uh, the father is the one giving the responsibility by God to confer blessings and curses is this also true spiritually or this is just biological no it's spiritual it's both it's biological and spiritual so who was your spiritual father benson irahosa archbishop irahosa of blessed memory what did he impact into your life when i went to bible school at that time i i i, I couldn't read and write mm. couldn't speak english and oh. uh, i struggled a lot with the Bible. The Bible was the first book I ever read. And uh, I learned how to read, write, and speak through the Bible. And I remember that when I went to Bible school, I was struggling one time with a subject in the classroom. Uh, uh, it had to do with eschatology, the second coming of Christ, and signs of the end times and all that. And, and I said, Lord, I think you've made a mistake. I, I think you brought the wrong guy here because this is tough, you know, looking at my background. And, and, I, and I heard the voice of God saying that, have you not heard and been told that I'm an expert mm -hmm. of taking a nobody and making a somebody out of him? And I take a nothing and make something out of nothing. And I take people from nowhere and take them places. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was like, if you trust me, I'll take you places. And then the spirit of the Lord said to me, that look at Idahosa, study him carefully. Mm -hmm. He's your Bible school. Wow. You will need what he carries. You will need his audacity. You will need his courage. Watch the way he deals with the, with the enemy. Watch the way he deals with demons and the way he commands. Mm -hmm. You will need that. You know, so I studied him very carefully. And um, by the time I left the Bible school, I was transformed. And I came back to Ghana, and uh, it was fireworks. Mm. Mm. You know, I mean, I could command and the elements and things. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I could command the elements. I could, I could command and say things, and they happened. Mm. You know, to the weather, to so many things. You it know, and then impartation. direct impartation. The one thing I also learned from my natural father, he was a very spiritual man, but he wasn't born again. Okay. He had his experience in another area. And one day, we live at the airport residential area, and he had this next property. And he called me and said, Nicholas, you said you're all software. I said, yes. He said, come here, follow me. So he followed me to one of his properties. Mm. And we had all these uh, coconut tree. And everyone had a fruit on it. Mm. But this particular tree had no fruit on it. And he spoke to the tree and said, when I come back next year, you're having more fruit. I'll count it down. Do you hear me? And I said to myself, this guy, something is going off, <laughs> you know. So I told one of my brothers, I said, you know, we got to pray for the old man. And he said, what do you mean? And I said, you won't believe what he just did. He took me to the coconut trees and spoke to a particular one. And this is what he said. When my brother didn't see anything, the following year, wow. I was reminded. So I went to check, and there was fruit on the tree. Mm. And that dawned on me, and I said, whoa. So they on the other side also understand how to deal with the elements, the rules of engagement. Mm. And then I was reminded uh, about Jesus speaking to the victory and cursing the victory. And mm. I, after 20, 
for hours. It, it, it dried up. It withered. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus speaking to the wind and the sea. And, and, and Joshua speaking to the sun mm -hmm. and to the moon. And I said, whoa, the thing works. And, and so that also gave me a lot of insight or illumination uh, when it comes to dealing with the forces of nature. But at, at which point did you know that you were to birth a movement? Because you mentioned in the book that you were a member of the Church of Pentecost, and then you went to Benin City, and then you started preaching around 1920. So, so the, the question is, when you came back and started Christian Action Faith in airport, yeah. did you know it was the beginning of a charismatic movement no. or you, just, you were just doing something? No, I was inspired because at that time there was nobody to look up to except Irahosa in Nigeria who I saw like once or twice in a year. And uh, when I came back I wanted to do something at the Church of Pentecost because I've already started yeah. going to the schools before I left and doing the outreaches in villages and the schools and all that. Mm. So when I came back, I went to the Pentecost and I wanted to be uh, an evangelist. So I, w I was asked to see James McKeon, oh. the founder of the Pentecost. So I went to see him uh, at Kanda. He lived at uh, the resident uh, over Accra Girls, um, uh, Accra High School anyway. So when I told him I've come back from Benin, I was trained by Papa Elton and Archbishop Idahosa, he just said, listen, we have had bad experiences with evangelists, so I can't help you, you know. So I left and I went to Idahosa, and I told him I wanted to work for him because I've started something here, going to the schools, doing evangelism, but I, I, I need something. And he said, no, God hasn't called you to Nigeria. I go back to Ghana. Wow. So I came back and I went to a few men of God, at Bozo at that time, Isaac Abebu, and then to one uh, Reverend Mensa, full gospel, Atema. And so he said, listen, this thing you've been doing before you went to Bible school, going to the schools, villages, evangelizing and all that, why don't you focus on the school outreach and the programs you do on Saturday, focus on it, you know? So I said, okay. I, I, I then put everything into it and um, uh, it was by inspiration. I went to the university, the secondary schools and I told my testimony oh. and then uh, prayed for people, made other calls, and uh, a lot of people uh, gave their life to Christ. People got inspired and move at that time. Uh, people like Bishop Dag was in Achimota when I used to go there. Uh, um, and a lot of uh, Isudan about them, people, Robert Ampiakofi was in Legon. I mean, Fred Digby was in Legon, Calvary Baptist, you know, and I was everywhere. You know, I was the talk of the town, and everybody was coming to help. And, and there was nothing like that? No. At the time? It was the Pentecostal and the established churches. It's funny. You were born in 1957, mm -hmm. and Ghana was born in 1957. Yeah. Do you think much of that, or is this a coincidence? Uh, I, I don't know how anybody thinks about that, but I, I think it's prophetic. I think for me it's prophetic, and I think... Uh, it, it's something that, uh, for whatever reason, I, I, I believe that has given me a lot of love for my country. Mm. And uh, I think that my uh, passion to pray for Ghana, it's, it has something to do with that. So there's a, there's a link there. I believe it. So this charismatic thing, you said there was established churches in the Pentecostals. What is different about a charismatic ministry than, say, an apostolic or church of Pentecost? Um, I think it has to do with the manifestations of the spirit, expression mm. of the word of God in, in a style and in a manner. And it comes with an approach different. Mm. Like when I used to go to the church of Pentecost, all the women sat in one place and all the men sat in one place, yes. you know, and the women had to cover their hair yeah. and that kind of thing. And during that time, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't see the youth okay. going to these churches. Mm. But when I came on the scene, up to now, it's been crazy. You know, they come in their thousands. The young people. The young people. And, and... Uh, that has been my calling and it's still my calling. That is where I've gone back to. Mm. So the youth involvement, the, the word, 
the gifts of the spirit and all the manifestations of the gifts of the spirit and then also interpretation of scripture mm. you know interpretation of scripture uh, and uh, it's a different light and a different illumination mm. you know uh, we when I came on the scene my emphasis was a little bit different in those days you know uh, it looks like when I came on the scene it was more of works mm. than grace okay you know and then the message of faith in God mm. and the message of prosperity you know that you can be successful you can do well in life and still serve God mm. and you can you can live in the best have the best and still serve God mm. you know and you, you you didn't have to uh, you didn't have to look some particular way mm. in order for you to serve God and that serving God or holiness was not poverty as mm. we were made to believe you know uh, there was a lot of things that prevailed in those days that when I came on the scene I mean I stood in defiance of all that mm. you know so uh, it became like um, a, 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 con a controversy, Heresy. you know, okay. uh, everybody, I, it was like I challenged everything, mm. you know, and we started looking at uh, either baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, everything in a new light. Mm. 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 So grace, faith, gifts, th that prosperity. Ex uh, prosperity. Yeah. Okay, so 40 years down the line when you scan the charismatic landscape what you see is that what you started is it i mean so if it's almost like if, if john the baptist came back to see what christ was doing would he say this is actually what i birthed so when, when you look at what is happening in the charismatic circles is that in the spirit of what started 40 years ago yes and no yes because the true stream is like today we have uh, dual streams. Mm. The true stream <clears throat> has done very well, has grown and mature. And we need to go back to certain fundamentals that we've walked away from so that it doesn't become uh, like a club or some kind of uh, um, uh, I don't want it to become like another denomination because there's a difference between a movement and a denomination. A movement is like a current that moves and it carries everything on its way. You can't stop it. It's unstoppable. But there are people who have also come on the scene imitating uh, what started when I came on the scene to try to be like us or to be to become like us and there's a lot of contamination you know and it's not a charismatic move but can we not say that some of you the pioneers and the, the the large pastors who started it because you have to build a church and because you have to establish an institution the current and the movement of um, what you started has to die down so now you have a big church you have a university there are church members who come in some of them have been christians for 30 years and a lot of the churches don't do as much evangelism anymore. It's all about building institutions. Do you feel that has affected the thriving of the original movement? Yeah, that's what I said, that um, we've walked away from some of the fundamentals, which I've gone back to, you know, talking about purity, sanctification, holiness, uh, the second coming of Christ, Christian character, personal integrity, you know, um, values, you know, rebuilding our value system, uh, and truth. Mm. You know, we've walked away from a lot of things where it's like right now, everything goes, you know, and we've emphasized more on the anointing and the giftings or the charisma more than character. I preach the other day at a conference with Bishop Titi Ofer and I was telling them that God has not called us to be powerful or to be anointed or to be gifted or even to be successful. God has called us to be faithful. Mm. 
And I think we need to go back to the message of faithfulness. This is City Showcase. We're talking to Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. It's 40, 60, 40 years of ministry, 60 years of life. We'll be right back. Thank you.